Welcome to the MOOCs course in Organic Chemical Technology. The title of today's lecture is Chloralkali Industry Soda Ash. Chloralkali Industry. This industry represents production of following major chemicals. Actually by chlor and alkali, you can see that alkali that uh, terminology is coming because of the lithium, sodium, potassium, this kind of component and then chlor is because of the chlorine, right. So, uh, especially uh, the chlorine and then alkali related together we are discussing as a chloralkali industry because of the three major chemical productions in this industry. There may be uh, in fact, in fact there are many other uh, product, products are also possible uh, that we can see anyway as a co-products etc. in this process when we are discussing about the production of these chemicals. But primarily three are very essential that are uh, leading this uh, you know uh, this chloralkali industry. One is the soda ash or sodium carbonate, another one is caustic soda or sodium hydroxide and then chlorine gas. So, these are the three components or three chemicals which are you know primarily you know dominating this chloralkali industry, there may be other components as well. Because of the nature of the product here uh, you know alkalis are there and then here chlorine gas is there. So, because of the nature of the chemicals this industry is known as the chloralkali industry. Then uh, what if, uh, why should we study about this chloralkali industry? Because they have uh, application, widespread applications uh, in the industry as that of H2SO4. You can see the H2SO4 uh, treated as a barometer uh, for the measurement of the development of chemical industry in India and then such much important is H2SO4 as we have already discussed. These uh, chloralkali industries also if you together uh, not like individual component together all components if you take uh, of chloralkali industry and then make a comparison. So, then you can see even the products these chemicals whatever we listed here uh, chloralkali industry major products they also have widespread distribution in the chemical industry such is important is this chloralkali industry and then especially out of which these three components are so much important that is the reason we have to uh, study as a chemical engineers. Okay. Why these chemicals especially sodium carbonate and sodium hydroxide form basis for the chloralkali industry because of the three reasons. The basic uh, source whatever is there to prepare these uh, chemicals is same that is sodium chloride and their uh, alkalinity also if you see there is a similarity and there is a co-production of chlorine as well. Okay? So, that is the reason you know these chemicals are very much essential and then they form basis for the chloralkali industry. Okay? Now, whatever the Cl2 and then NaOH that is sodium hydroxide and chlorine are available in the industry are produced in the industry out of which 90 percent is coming from the electrolysis of NaCl. Okay? Whatever the Cl2 produced and then NaOH uh, co-product produced in the chloralkali industry. Right. So, uh, 90 percent of uh, uh, these components that are available in industries or uh, these products that are available in industry are coming from the process where electrolysis of NaCl is being done. Okay? So, in other words most of the chlorine and then NaOH rather most of this almost we can say almost all the chlorine and then sodium hydroxide are coming from the electrolysis of sodium chloride brain. Okay. NaOH is competitive with soda ash that is sodium carbonate as it is also produced uh, from the same brand by a non-electrolytic process as well. Okay. Why to study about chloralkali industry? Because of the following production achievements that we are going to see. One is that chloralkali industry quarries and transports vast quantities of limestone for soda ash production limestone is also required for the process that we are going to see anyway when we discuss about the process. And then it extracts sodium chloride mineral from open water brine or deep wells that is other thing. And this industry also processes products to exceptional purity. Actually most of the industries the product when you produce they are not very pure maybe 10, 15 percent etc. Something like ammonia you see you produce in very uh, small uh, purity or then you have to uh, improve its purity etc. by the subsequent purification process etc. But here this industry whatever the chemicals 
that are being produced, they are often produced in exceptional purity that is high purity chemicals are produced in these industries. This industry does not require imports, you only need NaCl brain solution. So, you do not need to depend because these things are available in almost all countries. So, in India we are not depending on any kind of imports for this industry, completely indigenous industry. Also very important factor is that it walks an economic tightrope, shipping products, low price products such as soda ash. Soda ash is not very expensive, it is not expensive but still it is produced in large quantities you know and then you know obviously you know the economic tightrope walking would always be there and then you have to be careful to make a profitable plant, right. So, other thing is that not only this production of this uh, uh, components also market also until recent uh, past like uh, up to 1980s or 1990s whatever the Cl2 that is uh, produced in this electrolysis of NaCl process to get sodium carbonate and sodium hydroxide etc. You know only 60 percent is being consumed for uh, production of organic chemicals or you know chlorinated organics or any other components or many other uses of uh, this chlorine are also there we are going to see anyway. Only 60 percent of uh, chlorine gas is uh, used for different purposes and then remaining has to be disposed of and then disposing of chlorine is not an easy task. Again there you need to do so many kind of you know uh, calculations and then installation process for the disposing of this chlorine etc. all those things you have to study and then do properly. That is the case in India. Whereas in USA it is other way, chlorine is used but whereas the sodium hydroxide is being, uh, is being disposed of because of lack of market for it. Okay. So, it is not just you know uh, people sometimes find very uh, especially students find very exciting that you know we are producing so many chemicals from the one plant, but also if there is no market for so many co-products then there is no use. Okay. So, if you wanted to have a proper uh, you know you know chloralkali industry which is economically benefitable for you, it is better to have this industry in a uh, industrial complex so that you know some of the co-products there may there itself may be used etc. So, that is one of the engineering problem that we are going to discuss anyway. Now, we start discussing about soda ash Na2CO3. We start with pertinent properties, molecular weight 106, melting point 851 degree centigrade, boiling point is not there because it decomposes, solubility it is not that high. For example, at 20 degree centigrade only 8.9 grams of uh, sodium carbonate is uh, soluble in 100 grams of water. Okay. Grades, different grades are available, but especially you know two grades are there, low dense and then high dense grades are there. So, 99 percent uh, Na2CO3 or 58 percent Na2O uh, as one technical grade. So, where you have light grade and then dense grade or heavier grade sodium carbonate. What do you mean by light grade? Solids density is 1.86, bulk density is 0.6. In the dense grade, solids density is 1.91 and then bulk density is 1.0 gram per cc. So, now you can see the density is slightly increased and then this is done because of the hydration because this uh, sodium carbonate we are soon going to uh, see in subsequent slides that this is primarily used for the glass industry and then in the glass industry you need uh, you know dense or heavier uh, grade sodium carbonate. Okay. So, how it gets usually in the plant you get these uh, light grade uh, uh, product then it will it would be usually hydrated to increase its uh, grade or dense increase its density. Okay. Density is also two different densities you may be knowing that there are may be different densities like you know apparent density, bulk density etcetera. So, solids density, bulk density or two densities are given here. Another grade is nothing but washing soda which is nothing but sodium carbonate 10 H 2 O that is hydrated sodium carbonate is nothing but washing soda. Consumption pattern 
Soda ash is the most available on the market because it produced in high tonnages, high tonnages, large volumes, large quantities it is produced. And then it produced at low cost, that is also good. Reasonably pure, that is also very good. Then soluble alkali, it is soluble also. But the thing is that so much of uh, you know positives are there, you know high tonnage and low cost, reasonably pure sodium carbonate you are producing, but if it is not having marketing, then, uh, there is no point of producing such chemicals. Okay? So, these are the one of the reason that is these are produced in high tonnage and low cost, so that is the reason their cost is also low anyway, that is good anyway. Thus, it is found in numerous industries as well. End uses of soda ash, we see it in USA and then India. In USA, majority of it used for the glass industry. That is, out of the soda ash that is produced in USA, 36 percent is used for a, you know uh, glass industry, and then remaining 64 percent is used for other purpose. 36 percent, that is more than one third of soda ash produced in USA is consumed by the glass industry. Out of this 36 percent, if you see the breakup, 60 percent used for the bottles and containers, 29 percent used for uh, flat gases, 7 percent used for uh, fiber glasses and then 4 percent used for other kind of glasses. So, out of this uh, 36 percent, you know, you, if you do the breakage uh, of uh, consumption for different types of glasses, so then you can have this kind of percentages. Out of remaining 64 percent uh, soda ash produced in USA, it is used for the chemical manufacture 17 percent, soaps and detergents 9 percent, miscellaneous 7 percent, pulp and paper 2 percent, desulfurization 2 percent okay? and then export from USA to other countries is 27 percent. Okay? End uses of soda ash in India, in India mostly it is used for the soaps and detergents then followed by the glass and in glass industries. Soaps and detergents 40 percent, glass industry 18 percent, sodium silicate 15 percent, for other trade purpose 9 percent, chemical industry 12 percent, miscellaneous 6 percent. Now, we see manufacture of soda ash, what are the processes are available? The classification we see, methods of production, solve or ammonia soda process. Okay? By name here, ammonia soda, you can see here ammonia is involved and then soda is being produced. So, that is the reason it is also known as the ammonia soda process. Salve is an Italian scientist who developed this one in uh, 1816 or something like that. Okay? Because of uh, you know as a honor, as a respect to him, this process is also known as a Salve process. Another one is the dual process where not only sodium carbonate, but also crystals of ammonium chloride are produced. And then natural soda ash from deposits, this actually we have seen in the last week where we were uh, discussing about potassium industries in which we discussed about trona process. Here in this industry what we have seen concentrating of the brines of we have done and then after concentrating what you do triple effective uh, uh, evaporators are used. Right. So, here one of the product is that solids, you know, solids is the rich in soda, potash, etc. So, and then borax, etc. So, what we have done? We have done the subsequent purification of these products in three different stages and then different liquors we are getting and recirculating all that we have seen. So, indirectly, uh, production of uh, natural soda from deposits we have already seen. So, in this lecture we are going to discuss about these two processes. Salve or ammonia soda process, chemical reactions of this process uh, would be discussed first. Overall reaction, calcium carbonate reacts with the sodium chloride to give product sodium carbonate and then ways to take dispose of that is calcium chloride is also produced. But this is the overall reaction. In order to get this one, there are so many reactions are occurring in between before getting this final product. So, those reactions we will see in a sequential manner. This reaction takes place in a number of steps. 
first reaction is calcium carbonate decomposing into the calcium oxide and carbon dioxide gas. Then another one is that coke or carbon reacts with oxygen to give carbon dioxide because in this process what we have this process is that purified brine whatever is there that would be ammoniated then followed by that carbonated to get sodium by carbonate and then that will be calcium to get sodium carbonate this is the process. So, carbon dioxide is required so then this reaction has to take place and then calcium oxide reacts with water to give calcium hydroxide, ammonia gas reacts with water to give ammonium hydroxide it is a reversible reaction and then carbon dioxide reacts with the hydroxyl group to give bicarbonate ion. Then carbon dioxide react with water to give another bicarbonate ion by releasing a proton. Then sodium chloride or sodium ion and chloride ion of sodium chloride reacts with the ammonium ion and then bicarbonate ions to give ammonium chloride and then sodium bicarbonate. So, this is the, this is the important reaction where sodium bicarbonate is forming. So, this sodium bicarbonate would be calcium to get sodium carbonate. Okay. So, this uh, sodium bicarbonate decomposes to sodium carbonate by releasing carbon dioxide and then water vapors. And then whatever this ammonium chloride is formed that reacts with the calcium hydroxide to give the ammonia for the recycling because ammoniation has to be done by the ammonia and then it also produces calcium chloride wastage that has to be disposed of along with that one there would be water formation also. Now these reactions should be occurring in a sequence as it is written that is the reason these numberings are given. So these numberings are going to be very essential while discussing the process. Why? Because let us say ammoniation is there, whatever the ammonia is there that should be completely absorbed by the brain then only you have to release CO2. Otherwise, you know uh, ammonium chloride formation will take place and then that is uh, if it is prepared and then start forming crystallizations or precipitation of ammonium chloride is taking place. So, then sodium carbonate will not crystallize. Such kind of cut conditions are there that is the reason these reaction sequence is very important and then we are going to see them in the flow chart as well. Coming to the raw materials. Obviously, bulk requirements of salt, it is used as brine pumped from deep wells or as crystalline salt via evaporation procedures. Then coal is required because you need CO2, then limestone is required because you have to decompose the ammonium chloride to get the ammonia and then calcium chloride. So for that purpose this limestone is required and then small requirements of ammonia makeup in recirculation load is also there. Ammoniation step is there but its consumption is very low. How much? Only 0.2 percent of uh, ammonia whatever you are supplying as per the requirements of the calculation that much only being consumed, rest everything is being keep, keep on recirculations. Ammonia amounts to about 1.5 kg ton of sodium carbonate or greater than 99.8 percent recovery or that means whatever the ammonia you are supplying to the process out of which 99.8 percent has to be recovered. Only 0.2 percent is being consumed uh, for the absorption of ammonia in you know brine solution before going to the carbonation step. Okay. Quantitative requirements basis 1 ton of uh, sodium carbonate that is 58 percent Na2O, salt 1.55 tons limestone 1.2 tons, coke 0 0.09 tons, high pressure steam 1.35 tons, low pressure steam 1.6 tons, ammonia losses 1.5 kg, cooling water 40 to 60 tons, electric power 210 kilowatt hour. Ammonia losses also uh, it has to be carefully uh, designed and then utilized because you are using ammonia which is expensive to produce a low cost chemical like you know sodium carbonate. It is more expensive, it is less expensive, it is in fact it is cheaper 
in order to produce a cheaper uh, chemical if you are using ex expensive chemical. So, you have to be very careful while using that expensive chemical. You have to make sure that there should not be uh, you know um, uh, considerable losses. You cannot avoid some losses that is a different thing, but that loss should not be so high that it is making the process economically unfeasible. Plant capacities usually 200 to 2000 tons per day. Now, this is the flow sheet that we have uh, having here. So, purified brine solution whatever is there that is pumped to a ammunition tower where reactions E and then F are taking place. Right? So, where this uh, reaction is E is nothing but ammonia reacting with water to get ammonium hydroxide. Actually, they are produced in you know such a way that they can be easily decomposed and then it is a, re a reversible reaction. And then uh, F reaction is nothing but carbon dioxide is reacting with the hydroxyl ion to give bicarbonate ion. Okay? This is also reversible reaction. Right. Here to this ammoniation tower you are uh, supplying ammonia from the bottom okay? and from the top CO2 you are supplying. This CO2 has to be supplied after ammonia is being absorbed by the brain and then sent to the carbonation tower. Okay? Once the saturation of this uh, ammonia absorption in the brain has come because it is uh, in a continuous flow, so that continuously saturation of ammonia uh, absorption in uh, brain has to be maintained and then once that saturation has uh, reached then only you have to supply the CO2. So, ammoniated as well as the partially carbonated uh, uh, brain whatever is there that is taken to the carbonating tower right? in which reactions F, G, H are taking place. F is this reaction we have already seen. G reaction is nothing but CO2 reacting with water and then reversibly giving carbonate ion by releasing proton. And then H reaction is nothing but Na plus and then Cl minus reacting with this ammonium ion of uh, here. Actually, these are in ionic conditions. We are writing in such one such a way, and then it reacts also with a bi bicarbonate ion to give ammonium chloride and sodium bicarbonate. So, this is the product that is forming here. So, these three reactions are taking place in uh, carbonation tower and then these two reactions are taking place in ammoniation tower or ammoniating tower. Actually, we have shown only one, one tower for each of them. Uh, there may be multiple towers as per the requirements, okay? 3, 4, 5 or so they are possible. Okay. So, now the uh, product whatever is there uh, from the bottom of this carbonation tower is taken to a rotary filter press where the uh, pressing has uh, pressing of the slurry has been done and then whatever the liquor is there that is taken to the free ammonia steel and then whatever the solids are there, they are nothing but the sodium bicarbonate solids they will be calcined in a calciner at uh, 200 degree centigrade where reaction I is taking place that is nothing but 2 moles of sodium bicarbonate forming 1 mole of sodium carbonate and then releasing CO2 and then water vapors. Okay? For this calcination purpose fuel gases may be used in general. So, hot uh, sodium carbonate whatever you are getting after the calcination that is uh, water cooled and then taken to the packaging. Okay? So, now here for ammoniation tower you need uh, ammonia. So, that ammonia there is a makeup ammonia anyway there initially because recycling is not possible uh, at uh, T is equal to 0 time of the process starting. So, whatever the liquor that is taken here that is taken to the free uh, uh, ammonia steel and then uh, here uh, whatever the uh, chlorides are there in the liquor, they will be removed as a calcium chloride impurities and then almost like pure ammonia is taken to the combined uh, ammonia steel where the reaction 
and J is occurring that is reaction J is nothing but this is reaction I. Reaction J is nothing but decomposition of uh, ammonium chloride that is two moles of ammonium chlorides uh, reacting with uh, calcium hydroxide to give two moles of ammonia and then calcium chloride plus two moles of water. So, this ammonia is again you know after uh, you know treating with the steam it is recycled and then sent to the ammunition tower. Similarly, here you need uh, CO2 uh, for this process. So, uh, in a lime kiln where this reaction B is nothing but calcium carbonate is decomposing into the calcium oxide plus CO2 or this coke is getting combust to give carbon dioxide. So, this CO2 gases whatever are forming here in this reactor they are they are you know processed through you know uh, steam chambers and then sent to the carbonating tower through this line. Okay? Now, here uh, in this uh, process calcination when you are doing calcination of uh, sodium bicarbonate when you are doing you are not only getting Na2CO3, but also you are getting water vapor and then CO2. That CO2 after removing the water is also being sent to the carbonating tower again. Okay? Fine. So, this is the process that is occurring in the solid process. Now, here in the in this process or whatever these lakers etcetera are there that is calcium oxide formation they will be reacting with water here in this reaction in this reactor to form calcium hydrox calcium hydroxide or milk of lime because that is required for this uh, decomposition of uh, ammonium chloride to produce ammonia. Okay? This is the solid uh, process uh, briefly explained in the flow chart. Here in this process uh, additional thing is that in the ammoniation tower CO2 and then N2 would also be forming they will be sent back to the brain purification section because for the brain purification you may need this CO2. Now, the same process we are uh, going to discuss as a description part. This process developed by Solvay in 1869, so because of uh, him this process is also known as the Solvay process which is also as nothing but ammonia soda process. In this process ammonia dissolved in sodium chloride uh, solution and then reacted with CO2 to obtain sodium bicarbonate precipitate. It was then calcined to produce high purity sodium carbonate. A series of wash towers with ammonia and then CO2 are used to purify the saturated brine. So, in the flow sheet we have seen only one, but there may be multiple. In this purification process, calcium, magnesium, iron are removed as sludge. This purified brine is pumped to ammonia absorber tower where it dissolves ammonia with liberation of heat. So, here, here is this reaction E is taking place where ammonia is reacting with the water reversibly to give ammonium hydroxide. right? Now, this is a, a exothermic reaction it liberates the heat. Some CO2 also dissolves in this process because in, in the continuous process CO2 is also being supplied, but this CO2 is supplied after ammonia is being completely absorbed by NaCl brain. Okay? CO2 into release from the ammonition tower are fed back to the brain purifier. Ammoniated but partially carbonated brain is cooled to 30 degree centigrade and pumped to carbonating tower that is on cleaning duty where reaction F, G, H are occurring. F, reaction F and G are nothing but the formation of bicarbonate ions and then H is nothing but the formation of sodium bicarbonate. Okay? In order to fasten the cleaning process, weak CO2 gas is admitted at the bottom of carbonating tower. This gas serves to further carbonate the liquor to just below the precipitation point. CO2 released from carbonating tower is fed back to ammoniation tower. Carbonating towers are about uh, 22 to 25 meters high and then 1.8 to 2.5 meters in diameter and they are constructed of cast iron. During precipitation cycle temperature gradient is maintained 
20 to 25 degrees centigrade at both ends and 45 to 55 degrees centigrade in the middle. It is these conditions are maintained so that you know uh, precipitation of ammonium chloride should not take place, only you know precipitation of uh, sodium carbonate should take place. Tower gradually becomes fouled as bicarbonate uh, cake formation takes place on the cooling surface. Cleaning is done as described above. Liquor from a cleaning tower is passed to a series of 4 to 5 remaining towers in a production line. A tower is generally on the make part of a cycle for 3 days and cleaning portion for 12 hours because that sodium carbonate is continuously forming as a cake on the walls of the towers. So, that has to be scrapped continuously. Whatever continuously uh, you are sc scrapping or whatever effectively you are sc uh, scrapping that uh, sodium bicarbonate uh, uh, precipitation from the walls of the tower, there is still a requirement of cleaning. So, 3 days uh, production process is there or make process is there and then 12 hours would be there you know uh, for the cleaning purpose after completion of 3 days. In the making portion of a tower run, lean lime kiln gases are injected near the middle of the tower and rich CO2 gases from the bicarbonate calciner is recompressed and pumped to the bottom of the carbonating tower again as we have seen in the flow chart. In the make towers reactions F, G, H taking place that is uh, formation of a bicarbonate ions and then formation of a sodium bicarbonate as a product is the H reaction. Towers are constructed with a series of cooling boxes and sloped baffles so that sodium bicarbonate precipitate settles to the bottom and it is then pumped as magma or slurry to a rotary filter. Solids from the rotary filter are calcined at about 200 degrees centigrade in a calciner which may be gas fired or a steam heated unit. Fuel gases you can use or steam also you can use for this calcination of a sodium bicarbonate so that to get the sodium carbonate. Average daily production of a modern carbonating tower is about uh, 100 tons as uh, finished soda ash. Remainder of the process concerns about the ammonia recovery and then recycle. Remember this process is not going to be effective if you are not effectively recovering the ammonia. What do you mean by effectively recovering ammonia? More than 99.8 percent of uh, ammonia has to be recovered. Only 0.2 percent should be consumed or including the consumption and then losses it should not be more than 0.2 percent. Okay? Why? Because, because ammonia is more expensive than the product sodium bicarbonate. Gases from the calciner are cooled and returned to the carbonating tower. Filtrate liquor from the pressure type rotary filter is sent to pair of ammonia stills so that uh, decompose this uh, ammonium chloride by using calcium hydroxide so that products ammonia and calcium chloride waste would be forming. Ammonia would be recovered and then calcium chloride waste would be disposed of. In the first still, free ammonia in solution is driven off by distillation using a steam heated reboiler. The bottoms containing combined ammonia is fed to the lime still where reaction J releases ammonia gases. Okay? Reaction J is nothing but ammonium chloride reacting with the calcium hydroxide to give ammonia and then calcium chloride. Liquor effluent contains largely calcium chloride which uh, must be disposed of. Product from calciner is light soda ash, okay, light grade soda ash. So, then what you have to do if you wanted to have a dense or heavy grade uh, soda ash which is required for the glass industry, you have to you know uh, sufficient water is milled into the into form a monohydrate and then mixture is recalcined to get the you know heavy grade soda ash. We are going to see how these are going to be used in the glass industries etc. when we talk about the glass industry. Kinetics, reactions E to H are useful in explaining the kinetics of the precipitation reaction because E to H reactions, E to E reaction we have already seen ammonia reacting with water to give ammonium hydroxide reversibly and then F reactor is CO2 is reacting with the OH minus to give bicarbonate ion and then G is also CO2 reacting with the water to give 
bicarbonate ion by releasing a proton and then H is nothing but this uh, Na plus and then Cl minus reacting with the NH4 plus and then HCO3 minus to give sodium bicarbonate. These are the reactions. So, these are the very essential reactions, you know. So, you know, they are very important to explain the kinetics of the precipitation reaction. Rate controlling steps are F and G, these two are the rate controlling steps because of the solvation of CO2 because here carbonation is the one of the important step because ammonation followed by carbonation uh, is leading to the formation of the uh, sodium carbonate. But the ammonation how much it is being absorbed is uh, very small, only a small quantity of ammonia is being absorbed by the brine before it is uh, being carbonated. Okay? So, that is the reason this F and G are the very important and rate controlling steps. Okay. Also energy consumption should be high for these two steps, that is the reason they are rate controlling steps. Furthermore, the key to the process as discussed or discovered by the Solvay was the reactions must occur in the order shown as we have discussed. If ammonium bicarbonate is prepared and brine is added, no precipitation of sodium bicarbonate occurs. So, you should avoid ammonium bicarbonate formation. How you can do? you have to make sure the reactions to occur in the sequence as we have discussed. Then only ammonium bicarbonate will not occur, otherwise there is a chance of ammonium bicarbonate formation which you do not want. In other words, ammonia must be absorbed in brine first, then carbon dioxide should be added so that it will avoid formation of ammonium bicarbonate. Now we see major engineering problems, development of suitable calcium equipment. Sodium bicarbonate is in the wet condition actually that is being calcined to get the sodium carbonate. So, this calcining you will be doing in, in a kiln, right? So, that on the walls of the kiln this cake formation may be taking place. So, if the cake formation of sodium carbonate is taking place on the uh, walls of the kiln then effective heat transfer may not take place. So, that is one important issue. The skill must be equipped with heavy scrapper chain inside and wet filter cake must be mixed with a dry product to avoid caking. So, this is the solution. Okay. These problems can also be avoided by using fluidized bed calciner. Some of the plants, recent or modern plants are having these things, but the conventional older plants are not having this facility. Economic balance on tower design is very much essential because in this process the towers, a series of uh, ammoniation towers and then uh, carbonation towers are there. So, how effectively you are designing, economical balance is very much essential. Okay? So, tower height, pressure and temperature should be optimized so that giving approximately 75 percent yield of sodium bicarbonate from sodium chloride by the process that we have discussed. Then ammonia recovery, as mentioned ammonia inventory is uh, expensive, it costs 4 to 5 times than that of sodium carbonate inventory. So, obviously you must avoid losses or you must keep it as low as possible, otherwise the product is not going to give you enough money because ammonia is more expensive than this sodium carbonate. However, by proper choice of equipment design and then maintenance, losses are less than 0.2 percent of recycle load or about 1 kg per ton of sodium carbonate. When you produce 1 ton of sodium carbonate, only 1 kg of ammonia is being used. Such a way you have to design. Okay? Plant modernization. Most of the plants in India were very old, so then these had to be modernized by better materials of construction in replacement uh, maintenance and then use of automatic control as well. Waste disposal, find uses for large quantities of calcium chloride, sodium chloride, liquor or disposed as waste. Now, we discuss about the modified solid process or dual process. Okay. So, in this, uh, in this modified process what we do? Rather uh, reacting ammonium chloride with uh, calcium hydroxide to give ammonia and then recycling, what we are doing? We do 
mixing of this ammonium chloride with uh, salt and then we try to do the uh, crystallization by refrigerating it uh, at 0 degree centigrade continuously. So, that you can also have ammonium chloride as co-product in the production of sodium carbonate. Okay? So, but however, here economics one has to see because when you are uh, decomposing ammonium chloride using the calcium hydroxide to get ammonia, so ammonia is uh, uh, recovered and reused, recycled. But now if you are not doing that one, so then what happens? You are getting ammonium chloride. The what is the value for the ammonium chloride that also you have to see. So, the better thing about this ammonium chloride is that it is a ingredient to produce mixed chemicals, right? Mixed chemical fertilizers we have seen. So, in the production of those mixed chemical fertilizers, this ammonium chloride sometimes is used as a uh, ingredient. So, one has to see market for that for this ammonium chloride. Accordingly, you have to select whether should you go for the solve process or modified solve process. Chemical reactions, carbon reacts with oxygen to give carbon dioxide or coke reacts with the oxygen to give uh, carbon dioxide and then ammonia reacts with water to give the ammonium hydroxide and then carbon dioxide reacts with the hydroxyl group to give bicarbonate ion and then carbon dioxide reacts with water to give bicarbonate ion by releasing a proton. Whereas, this ammonium hydroxide out of which ammonia ion reacts with the sodium ion and then uh, chloride ion of sodium chloride along with the bicarbonate ion to produce ammonium chloride as well as the sodium bicarbonate. So, now here in the this part doing the calcination, calcining of this uh, uh, sodium bicarbonate at 200 degree centigrade to uh, get uh, Na2CO3 that is same there is no change. Now, modification is in this point here what you do you mix with uh, washed salt feed to improve its precipitation. When you do this one its precipitation will take place. and then you can get ammonium chloride crystals or you know solid product that you can use as ingredient in mixed chemical fertilizers productions or it may be having other uh, applications as well. Okay? So, this sodium bicarbonate further decomposes to sodium carbonate by releasing the carbon dioxide and then water vapors. Raw materials, input bulk materials are crystalline salt, fuel and then ammonia since ammonium chloride is a co-product. So, so, its consumption would be more. That how much it is we are going to see here in quantitative requirements. In quantitative requirements we are going to see these uh, quantities. Basis 1 ton of sodium carbonate that is 58 percent Na2O if you wanted to produce. Salt you need 1.26 tons, ammonia C 0.32 3 tons and then high pressure steam 1.35 tons, low pressure steam 0 0.10 tons. Cooling tower 50 to 80 tons and then electric power, power is also improved 450 kilowatt hour. Co-product 0.62 tons of ammonium chloride and then plant capacity usually 30 to 500 tons per day. So, in the previous process what we have seen original solve process ammonia losses are there. How much? Only 1.5 kgs. Only 1.5 kgs of ammonia losses is there in the original solve process. Now, here ammonium chloride you are getting as a product. So, it is consumption proper consumption is there and then how much it is for 1 ton of uh, sodium carbonate production you need 0.3 tons of uh, ammonia. Process description, main modification of the dual process is recovery of ammonium chloride as a co-product rather than liberation of the con contained ammonia for recycle as in the solve process liquor from the bicarbonate uh, filter whatever is there that we in the initial solve process react with the calcium hydroxide to get ammonia, but here we are not doing that one. 
that would be mixed with washed salt feed to aid in precipitation of ammonium chloride which is crystallized in a refrigerating tank continuously at 0 degree centigrade. Slurry is centrifuged and then ammonium chloride crystals are dried in a rotary drum, hot air dryer then packaged in bags for shipping. So, now you can see only this is the different in the flow sheet, right? Other than that one, rest of the uh, solvay process is same. So, that is the reason separate flow sheet has not been shown. Compared to the solvay process, only this step is uh, different and then you know only that is one step only. Major engineering problems, in addition to calcining and economic balances on tower design as mentioned as, as mentioned in solvay process that we have just discussed following are important problems. One is the salt purification. Solid salt used to obtain better crystallization yields of ammonium chloride and cannot be purified as with uh, brine as with sodium chloride uh, brine feeds in solvay process. Only purification is mechanical washing and dewatering is possible. Corrosion is another important problem. Ammonium chloride solution especially is quite corrosive in equipment involved like in crystallization and then solids recovery section. So, the solids recovery section and crystallization unit should be constructed by using Dormite 20 or rubber lined units. Okay. Refrigeration, next problem is the refrigeration. We have seen that you know uh, it continuously refrigeration has to be done at uh, 0 degree centigrade. So, economic balance on yield of ammonium chloride versus refrigeration cost. In order to get uh, ammonium chloride, uh, you have to use the refrigeration, but if the refrigeration cost is very high compared to the uh, product cost, then it is not going to be useful. So, then economic balance is very much important. So, at economic temperature of around 0 degree centigrade, electric requirement are still twice that of solvay operation. Okay. Economics, marketing and sales are important. Sodium carbonate is the cheapest alkali, but competition from ammonia for weak alkali requirements can be expected because ammonia prices or cost is continuously dropping relative to the uh, sodium carbonate cost. Price reduction for soda ash must come by erecting plants in the 1000 tons per day size. The present size are approximately 200, 300 tons per day etc. like that only in India. So, the size has to be you know increased to at least you know 1000 tons per day so that you know price reduction in you know uh, soda ash production you know can be reduced. Plant location factors because here NaCl brine is there and then uh, other uh, calcium carbonate and then uh, coke etc requirements are there, right? So, transportation should not be a kind of a uh, additional load. So, the plant has to be located where you can get these, these materials, you know, at a reachable distance or you know, a less distance. One ton of sodium carbonate requires 8 tons of brine, limestone and coal. So, proximity to raw materials is prime consideration, it is very much essential because transportation costs are very high nowadays. Salt sources are usually the key factor as they are less widely distributed than limestone or coal. Then industry diversification, as we have seen this Na2CO3 it is not very expensive chemical and then it is produced in high tonnages. So, in addition to this one NaOH and then chlorine etc. also produced. So, then industry diversification is required. Okay? So, most companies have gone or should go into the production of caustic, chlorine and then sodium bicarbonate with NaCl brine available, not only just a sodium carbonate, then only you can make a you know, you know better profit from this plant. Industry is closely tied into vast manufacturing complex that characterizes the chloralkali industry. They are plants for the glass manufacture. We have seen that around 18, 20 percent of uh, uh, Na2CO3 soda ash 
is used for the glass industry. So, we are going to discuss glass industry in, uh, very soon, so then where we, then we can discuss how it is being used there. It is also used in the cement industry to obtain lime sludge and then solid CO2 production. Choice of processes, now you have uh, three processes actually. Here we discussed only two processes because the natural process of uh, soda ash getting from the uh, brains we have already discussed in the potassium industries. Now here we discussed solve and modified solve process or solve process versus dual process. So choice is very much essential, right? So now here advantages, disadvantages we are written, they are with respect to the dual process. Advantages of the solve process with respect to the or compared to the dual process or modified uh, dual processes are given here. Compared to the dual process or modified dual process, solve process having the advantage of low grade brine can be used, less electric power required, less corrosion problem because ammonium chloride uh, you know crystallization and then uh, solids recovery is not there because ammonium chloride is much more uh, corrosive than any of the other chemicals used here in this process and then no co-products to dispose of. Whatever the sodium chloride and then uh, uh, NaCl liquor is there that is only you need to think of to dispose, okay. Does not require ammonia plant investment. You need only 1.5 kgs of ammonia per ton of Na2CO3 production. But compared to the modified solve process or dual process, what are the disadvantages of this solve process? Higher salt consumption, more steam consumption, higher capacity plant for economic break even operations, waste disposal of uh, calcium chloride and sodium uh, chloride streams, then higher investment in ammonia recovery units because in the solve process if you are not recovering ammonia effectively up to 99.8 percent or more, so then that is not going to be economically you know profitable. So that is a big concern in the solve process, okay. Whereas in the modified solve process you have the crystallization units for ammonium chlorides. So here again you have the investment. So the investment cost you have to do. Recovery of ammonia is uh, less investment or less capital requirement or crystallization of ammonium chloride is requiring less capital that you have to see as per your uh, resources and then make a decision. With current fertilizer shortage all of ammonium chloride will be used as a mixed chemical fertilizer ingredient. So co-product disposal problem is not there in the dual process or modified solve process. So these are these advantages, disadvantages are with respect to dual process or modified solve process. References for this lecture are provided here. Thank you.